I cannot believe this day would ever come, but it's time to get rid of my MacBook only for home production because now I've got this beautiful setup that actually allows me to use my Windows machine as a Linux beast. And in today's video, I'm actually going to be showing you guys how you can do so for yourselves. This video is sponsored by Vidyard, an easy screen capture and video platform that allows you to record high quality videos up to one hour each. With Vidyard, you have the power to analyze the effectiveness of your videos and gives you the tools to easily get the most out of them. You can record and share unlimited videos for customer presentations, social media content, team updates, and more in just a few clicks. In my case, this free screen recorder makes it easy to communicate better with today's video. In today's video, I'm going to be guiding you on how you can transform your Windows environment into a Linux beast. I will be providing all the resources you guys need in the description down below in order to achieve this. And please know that I've already gone through this progress myself, which means I won't be reinstalling everything from scratch, but I am going to be showing you guys step by step how you can turn all of this into the perfect Linux machine for development. All right, so the very first thing you guys should do is definitely run Winver. So Winver will allow you to check the version you currently have installed of Windows. Now, if we check the version right here, we have version 2004, and that's exactly the version we want to have. Now, if you guys don't have that version installed, you can go to Windows Update Settings, and you can click on Windows Update and check for updates and make sure you install that version. If that doesn't work, there is an alternative, which is what I actually used. You can download this right here. I will provide the link down below. You click update now and it'll download a Windows 10 upgrade file, run it, and you'll be good to go. Now, once you guys have actually done that, you have to type turn Windows features on or off. And you guys have to make sure that first your virtual machine platform is checked. The hypervisor platform is unchecked. And also you want to make sure that Windows subsystem for Linux is checked. Once all of this is good to go, we are going to go to the Microsoft store and make sure you download Ubuntu. Of course, if we type here, search Ubuntu, make sure you guys click on the 20.04 LTS. You obviously install that. I already have it installed so I can just launch it. Once this launches like that for the first time, you guys will have an install script. It'll go ahead and install everything you guys need for Ubuntu and you guys might run into a WSL2 error which will require you guys to install the latest version of the kernel and the solution to that is very easy just make sure you download the Linux kernel update package right here and if you're running an ARM64 machine you can do it right here. Once that's done feel free to rerun Ubuntu it'll go ahead into the installing progress it'll ask you for a Unix name and all that funky stuff and then it'll prompt you to the screen right here. Once this is all done, you guys want to download the new terminal that Windows created. You install it, then you launch it. Of course, I already have it installed and it'll prompt you to Windows PowerShell. So if you guys want to make sure that you've installed everything successfully, you can type the ESL L and V. And there you go. You guys will see that you are running Ubuntu 20.04. It is running currently and it is the version two. Now, in my opinion, it's not practical to be using this right here. So I'm going to show you how you can use the terminal and load automatically into your Ubuntu directory, as well as run this Linux right here, this Ubuntu part of the machine. Now I reset it all for you guys so I can go ahead and show you. The very first thing you guys want to do is go into settings and in here you will see a default profile. Now this default profile right now is set to PowerShell. And what you guys want to do is to copy and paste the Ubuntu profile. So you grab this here, copy, and you paste it right here. And then you save it, control S, close this, close that, reopen this, and voila, you'll see you'll be running automatically your Linux terminal. Now, every time you're going to be starting the terminal, it's going to be really annoying because you are going to start in the Windows directory. You don't want that. You want to start in the Linux directory, and this is very easy. So if you open Ubuntu, the original terminal, you are going to type this following command. RC. You'll open that with VS Code, 
and you go all the way down and I'm just going to copy paste this because I already had it before. And this here is what's going to make your terminal start automatically in the Linux directory. So make Ubuntu start here instead of the default Windows path. Just use this right here. You save this, close this, and we are going to close the terminal again. Once you open it again, boom, you guys will see that we are actually starting in all default Linux directory. So every time you open the terminal, you'll be prompted right here and you can go ahead and do whatever you want. As you guys can see, I only have one folder and that's pretty much where I put all my code. And one other cool thing I would like to show you guys is that you can have custom PS1 profiles. Now I did find a generator, which is pretty freaking cool. If you go on easyprompt.net, you can go ahead and generate whatever you guys want. You click username. I don't know, have a color to it like red and then have, I don't know, maybe shell version and have green background and just copy this whole thing, put in your bash profile and you'll be good to go. Now you guys might be wondering, okay, this is really cool and all, but I'm not going to be developing stuff in Nano or Vim. And no, I know you guys won't do that because I wouldn't do that. So what you guys can do is actually open VS Code and download a WSL remote extension. I do have it installed. If I open right here VS Code and go all the way to extensions, you guys will see that I have a WSL remote extension. I already installed it. Everything works properly. Once this is installed, you can click right here, open a remote window view, and you can click remote WSL new window, and it'll automatically load your WSL Ubuntu 20.04. If we go on Explorer and we open a folder, these are all the freaking files you have on Ubuntu. But as you guys know, this code right here, this is part of my Ubuntu thing here. You guys can see that is a directory I do have in my home directory. And if I click on it and I can just, I don't know, open it. You guys will see this is all the code I've been writing lately. So that is pretty freaking cool. You can start creating folders right here. And obviously they will show right here. Once you do this, it will show all here if you start messing with it. One thing I'd like to point out guys is that every time you install extensions, it all depends where you are. So if you're in Windows, you will install extensions for Windows. If you're not on Windows, it'll start installing extensions for Ubuntu. Right here, we're actually on our remote server. So we are on Ubuntu. Every time I'll install an extension, it'll install right here. So just keep that in mind. Also, you can go in your file, then you can go into settings and you can change the font for your remote. If you guys look at here, I have also modified in remote. If I click remote, I'll have this. If I click user, which is the windows, I'll have this again. If you guys want a really cool font, I've been using Cascadia code. I'll leave a link in the description down below. You guys can download that. It's pretty cool. I find it looks pretty neat. This is what it pretty much looks like. Now that you guys have your environment pretty much set up, there's something very important you guys should take into account and that is GitHub and Git. So if we go all the way to, let's open here web dev and your first time with Git and GitHub, these are all the instructions you guys need in order to go ahead and install and make sure you are connected to your GitHub account via your remote WSL connection. Now this stuff is pretty easy to do. All you have to do is follow this. You want to go ahead and create your user.name here, put your email address, just like you've done before. Also, you want to generate a key. Once your machine or your Ubuntu machine generates a key, you want to copy that key, create a new SSH key using GitHub, paste it there and run this command in order to check the connection. If the connection is successful, you'll have this message right here. Just follow this step by step and you guys will be good to go. I have my MacBook connected to my GitHub and I also have my Windows machine connected to my GitHub and everything pretty much works like a charm. And the very last part to complete this video is obviously install Node. Now in order to install Node, you have to download curl, which will allow you to download and install the script, which will install NVM and NVM will allow you to install Node. I know it's a bit complicated, but that's pretty much how it works. To install curl, all you have to do is type sudo apt get install curl. 
you run that, it'll install curl. Once curl is downloaded, you can copy the command. I will leave in the description down below. Again, copy this, paste it, run it, it'll install NVM. Once you run that command, you want to make sure that it is properly installed. So you just run NVM version. And as you can see, we have a version going for ourselves. And with that, you can just write NVM install node and it'll go ahead and install node for you. Of course, I can type node version and I have my node version on my Ubuntu machine. Now with this, you guys are pretty much good to go. You have converted a Windows machine into a Linux beast. It is pretty much the exact same thing as my Mac OS system. Everything pretty much works the same and you get the benefits of having Windows. If you guys are gamers or you guys are hardcore Adobe users like myself, this is the best of both worlds. Also, I'd like to point out that Python 3 does come installed with Linux. The only thing you guys have to do is to install pip3 in order to have your package manager. And that is pretty much it. You guys will be set to go with Python, maybe modify VS code in order to run Python here and there. But that's it. If you guys have enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel for more. And I really hope this video has helped you guys improve your development and your workflow. That being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.